Jeannie Cho Lee joins us now from Cambridge, Massachusetts. She's the first ethnic Asian to achieve the Master of Wine accreditation, as well as a wine critic, author, and educator. Uh, give us a sense of the trajectory there in China. Just how popular is wine in the country, and when did we start to see this upward trend in interest? Well, the interest really started to have this upward trajectory starting 2009 and 10. Uh, and you see all the figures of um, both uh, wine imports as well as consumption going up. Uh, and I think if you compare China to any other wine-consuming country, uh, it's still, you know, despite the slowdown in recent years due to COVID and other things, it's still uh, the most promising and for uh, export wine countries like um, South Africa, which was just mentioned, or um, United States or Chile or Italy, France, uh, China still represents really the, the growth market of the future. Yeah, talk to us uh, about uh, imported wines. Um, you know, you mentioned a number of countries there. Just listening to uh, these folks from South Africa, seeing a, a doubling in sales in two years. Obviously, I would think uh, Chile, the U.S., all of these places would be lining up because that's a big market, isn't it? It is. And I think everyone's been trying to fight for their share of the market in China. Uh, and you've seen it play out and uh, until the tariffs were, were levied very heavily on Australian wines. Uh, it seemed as though Australia was going to, to really dominate and win that fight. But uh, if you look at the figures for the last year, um, since uh, the heavy, you know, over 200 um, percent taxes were levied on Australian wine, uh, you see France actually coming back and um, taking up that number one spot, both for value, which, it, which it's always had, and also for vo volume. Yeah, we've certainly talked a lot about trade disputes on this uh, broadcast. Of course, the United States having its share of trade disputes with China. But of course, Australia's uh, trades dispute undoubtedly uh, has to be really uh, hammering the wine industry. I mean, uh, how much of a hit have they mm -hmm. taken? Oh, absolutely. I know that uh, I've spoken to some people at Penfolds and other very large companies, and they're actually pivoting away and um, realizing that they've had an over-reliance on the Chinese market. And because uh, China was the most important export market for Australia, you know, as it is for Chile, uh, they've had a huge dependency. And now they're saying, well, maybe this is a healthy shakeup because now we really should be diversifying and not just relying on one market to, to really take the majority of their exports. And what about uh, the growth of vineyards inside China? Are we seeing that as well? Yeah, I think this is the one thing that's really benefited uh, the, the kind of restriction to travel and trade over the last two years during the pandemic is that uh, the domestic wineries have you know, they, they have shrunk as well because they, they were starting on that down decline slope starting from 2018 anyway. But it's really slowed down, and I think people are really trying to support domestic products, domestic, you know, um, foods, domestic tourism. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, that from what I've heard from uh, friends who are, uh, who have wonderful wineries in Ningxia and also Shandong province, they're doing really well, wow. especially at the premium end of the market. Very interesting. Jeannie, thank you so much for your insights. Really appreciate it.